Mr. Speaker, a few weeks ago, I led a delegation of Canadian parliamentarians to a place of horror, a grave for 6,000 innocent souls, a place called Ground Zero. It is impossible to look upon the ruin of the World Trade Center and not be moved. Be moved by disbelief, by sympathy for the victims, by outrage at the criminals, by a desire for righteous punishment. But, above all, by a firm resolve to stand up and be counted to stand up for our people, for our values, for our way of life. To send a clear message to the cowards in the shadows who plan this crime against humanity. That their days of being able to run and hide are coming to a end. And if the attacks of September 11th are a shameful benchmark for the dark side of human nature, the deliberate and forceful manner in which Canada and the world have marshaled our resources against the forces of terror will be remembered as proud benchmark of global courage and common purpose. for the wise and measured response of President George Bush to NATO speaking as one, to the rapid formation of an, an unprecedented multinational and multi-ethnic coalition, a coalition in which the principal adversaries in the Cold War, the United States, Russia, and China are now making common cause. Here at home, Mr. Speaker, Canadians have been fully engaged, and all governments have matched their engagement with helpful actions and proposals by mayors and the provincial premiers. With the round-the-clock work of public servants, for which they have the tanks of all Canadians. <laughs> Up to now, we have had substantial debate in this House, more than 40 hours, and substantive discussions in our committees. Mr. Speaker, protecting innocent citizens against terrorism was a fundamental priority of civilized nation before the awful events of September 11. For our part, Canada has already pioneered ways of preventing terrorists from exploiting our country as a base of operation and attack, including the screening of air passengers abroad before they fly to Canada, and proposed changes to the Immigration Act and Customs Act, currently before Parliament, anticipated many of the security and economic concerns that have been given renewed prominence in recent days. I urge all parties to work together urgently to pass these bills. Since September 11, our border crossings have been on high state of alert, and security measures were immediately increased at our airports. But in the days since, it has become clear that the scope of the threat that terror poses to our way of life has no parallel. We, in North America, have been extraordinarily fortunate to live in peace, untouched by attack. But that has changed. Additional action is required from Canada and all nations domestically and in concert with each other 
for there to be a truly effective and truly global offensive against terrorism. Accordingly, Mr. Speaker, I am pleased to update the House on the specific steps our government is taking as part of a comprehensive action plan on Canadian security. A plan whose goals are to protect Canadian citizens, keep our borders secure, protect our values, sustain our economy, and defy the threat of terrorism that terrorism poses to free and civilized nations everywhere. Our action plan entails both immediate action and new legislation. It is measured and focused, and it equips Canada to be an aggressive international partner in the coalition to destroy roots and branch the shadow networks of supply, finance, and penetration that allow the terrorists to carry out the mass murder of September 11. Above all, our plan will reassure Canadians that even, even in the wake of September 11, we can live our lives on our terms according to our values, not on terms dictated from the shadows. But as I told the NATO Parliamentary Assembly last week, Mr. Speaker, we must be clear in our minds that this is a new kind of struggle against a new kind of enemy. And we must not allow ourselves to be trapped by the rhetoric or experiences of past wars to define our tactics or measure our success. The twisted calculus of success for our adversaries is not territorial gain, but the extent to which they can, through terror, rip that the very fiber of our societies, disrupt our economies, set community against community, fate against fate, or citizen against citizen. Monsieur le Président, il ne fait aucun doute que le pouvoir militaire aura un rôle à jouer dans le nouveau conflit. Ainsi, j'ai autorisé l'opération Apollo, le plus vaste déploiement de militaires canadiens depuis la guerre de Corée, et plus de 2000 hommes et femmes vont y prendre part. Des tâches vitales ont été assignées à nos navires, à nos transporteurs aériens, à nos avions de surveillance aérienne dans le cadre de la campagne militaire internationale en cours contre Oussama Ben Laden, son réseau Al-Qaïda et le régime renégat des talibans qui les abritent en Afghanistan. Dès le début de cette campagne, nous avons dit très clairement que nous ne ciblions, nous ne ciblons pas l'islam, mais bien un groupe d'extrémistes dont le but est de terrifier et de perturber les nations et dont les actes meurtriers ont injustement, très injustement, sali une grande religion mondiale, l'islam. Nous ne sommes pas non plus en conflit avec le peuple afghan. En fait, le monde entier a entrepris de fournir des secours à la population de l'Afghanistan. Nous sommes en conflit avec le régime taliban. Monsieur le Président, aucune décision ne pourrait être plus grave pour un Premier ministre que celle d'envoyer des Canadiens participer à des opérations militaires. Je sais que tous les députés, comme tous les Canadiens et Canadiennes, sont conscients de la gravité de cette décision.